In lesson 13, we're going to be looking at incorporating rotations into our transformations that we've been doing. Um, and so let's take a look at this. There's something called the semaphore alphabet that people hold flags in different positions to symbolize different letters of the alphabet. So this um, position here is the letter Z, where you have your left flag, your left hand flag here and your right hand flag here. This would be J, right hand flag straight up, left hand straight out. So let's talk about describing the trans or the rotation that would move the left hand flag to the right hand flag. Okay, so try and describe that. You can push pause and then come back. So the transformation that would move this left hand flag to the right hand flag. Okay, so it looks like it's halfway between straight out to kind of an eastern direction versus south. So halfway between 90 would be a 45 degree rotation and this one is clockwise around the point of intersection of the arms. You could call it the shoulder if we were talking in real life. And then this second one left to right looks like it's going the other direction counterclockwise. So 90 degree counterclockwise rotation around that shoulder. So when, how would you define a rotation? So what would be your, your definition of rotation? Take a second to write that down and then we'll look at the mathematical definition. So mathematical definition of rotation is that every point of the figure moves in a circle around the center being the point of rotation. So in those in these flag cases around the shoulder, there needs to be a direction which is clockwise or counterclockwise and then also an angle of that movement. So let's take a look at activity 13.2 on page 90 of your textbook. So we're gonna rotate quadrilateral ABCD 90 degrees clockwise around point Q. Okay, so this one needs to be connected to point Q. So what we did in class was looked at tracing paper. So we laid the tracing paper over this. You could connect Q to this figure, okay, and draw that figure on. You really just need to draw the dots. Then we'd wanna rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, so 90 degrees clockwise is gonna rotate it here. So I just connected Q to A, and then this is where I'm going to rotate to so that it's 90 degrees. So you can see from here to here will be my rotation of 90. Um, so on tracing paper, you could like hold your pencil right here and then just rotate the tracing paper so that this point Q stays the same. I can't do that on my screen. So I just have to do the 90 degree rotation <clears throat> and then move it back to Q. But so we get that 90 degree rotation and you see where each of those um, new image points would go. So we'd move A here, okay, B moved to here, C and D. So then you could remove your tracing paper and get that new image drawn. And then you could label it. It doesn't tell you to label it, um, but I'm just gonna label this one so we can see this would be A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Then the next one asks you to do a 180 degree rotation around R. So I'm gonna take R and connect it to this image or this original figure. That was pretty bad, let me try again. Okay, so we're going to, I'm just going to trace this on. All right, then you need to do a 180 degree rotation. Doesn't matter which direction, clockwise or counterclockwise with 180 because it ends in the same place because it's half of a circle. So this time we're going to rotate it over to this line. That would be 180 degrees away. So again, I'll just rotate 180 here and move it. So that's 180. And then I'm going to move it to connect the original R right back there. <clears throat> so then you see the new um, points 
where you could draw your image. Okay, so you see that it moved here, 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 and here, and then you could remove your tracing paper and connect those to get your new image. All right, then in the diagram below that, we're gonna be rotating on this triangular grid. So let's remember um, we talked about these triangles being equilateral and equiangular. So that means that every angle in here is 60 degrees. Okay, so we've got this 120 degree rotation. So it's gonna rotate two triangles. So um, we're gonna take this hexagon, H, J, K, L, M, N, and rotate it 120 degrees clockwise around O. So connect O to this shape. So I'm just gonna connect it to K because that's along a line that I can look at. And then we're gonna rotate it 120 degrees. So we're gonna rotate it to this line. That'll be 120, 60, 60 is 120 clockwise. So I'm gonna grab this shape and I'm gonna rotate it 120 degrees. So I'm just gonna keep rotating it until it's along that line. and then that will get you your 120 degree rotation. And you'd be able to mark where those points are so that you can draw your new um, image. So we can just connect these points. And re um, remove the tracing paper, right? So you get your new image. So that's a 120 degree rotation around O. And then again, you could label the points. It doesn't tell you to here, okay? But you could label where the points went. So you could get J prime, K prime, L prime, M prime, N prime, H prime. Then this next one asks you to rotate it 60 degrees around point P, okay? So again, I just connected up one of these grid lines. So I don't wanna connect here to J because that's not on one of the grid lines. So I'm gonna connect P all the way up this way to L and then just draw this figure on. And you could be doing this on your tracing paper. Then we wanna go 60 degrees counterclockwise. So we're gonna to wanna to go 60 degrees counterclockwise, which is gonna to be to here. So then you could just hold your pencil down on P and just rotate this. Okay, I'm just gonna keep moving it until it gets 60 degrees. Oops. Okay, so then that would be your 60 degree rotation. That will get you your new points that you can then connect. So we've got here to here, 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 and you get that whole hexagon rotated. And then again, I mean, you could label those points. So H went to here. So H prime, N prime, M prime, L prime, K prime, J prime. Okay, so what information do you need to do the rotation? So you needed the point that you're rotating around, the direction of the rotation, and the degree. Okay, so you need the point that you're rotating around, a direction and a degree or an angle. It's probably a better way to say that. And why don't we need to know the direction for 180? Because whether you go this way or this way, you end up at the same spot since it's half of 360. All right, then let's um, do a couple more practices on transformation. So in this one on page 91, my suspects that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. She thinks these steps will work to show there's a rigid transformation from ABC to DEF. So ABC being the blue, DEF being the green on this screen. 
So translate by the directed line segment. Okay, so remember translating by a directed line segment. Um, and we're starting with ABC. So I'm just going to draw on ABC here. So translating along that would be moving this whole figure the direction of that line segment. So all of the points are going to move that exact um, vector. So let me just show you on here that they all move that much. Okay, so we had this vector. Okay, and then B to B prime is that exact same length and C to C prime is that exact same length. Then it says rotate the image how many degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so how many degrees counterclockwise around point D. So now we're sitting on point D. So how far do we have to rotate, okay, to rotate all the way around? So how far do we have to rotate to get this to land on here? So taking a look at how basically how many triangles is this? So we've got this one at 60, another 60, another 60, and another 60. So 240 degrees counterclockwise should rotate that around. Um, and then it says reflect over DE. So let's actually rotate this. Okay, and we want to rotate it so it rotates all the way around to here. Whoops. Okay, so we're going to go... around 240 degrees. You could do this on your tracing paper. Okay, so rotating at 240 degrees counterclockwise would get us to here. Then it says re reflect it over line DE. Okay, so let me just draw a line DE, kind of got lost there, but the D is in there. So now reflect it over this line. So now just reflect it over that line. And so if we reflect, this will stay the same, E will stay the same here, and then um, this one will reflect down onto F. I can't really show you that on the computer. Let's see, maybe we can go. I don't know that flipping it up and down is going to work because I can't choose to do it over a line segment here. There we go. We'll flip it right down there onto itself. Okay, what's your definition or what is the definition of congruent? Um, and that is same shape, same size or same exact measurement. So exactly equal, everything is equal. We have a transformation that takes triangle ABC to DEF, so what does that tell us? So that tells us that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. It also tells us that ultimately A mapped to D, point B or angle B mapped to E, point F or sorry, point C mapped to F. All right, then you've got the lesson summary that you can read through about rigid um, motions. So three rigid motions we've done is reflect, translate, and rotate. The rigid motions apply to any figure, so it'll create a congruent image, so exactly the same shape and size. You need three things to do a rotation. So that was that center point, the direction you're gonna rotate, and the angle of rotation. Seeing a couple here, so here's a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, a 120 degree counterclockwise rotation, or sorry, this one's clockwise. So that was the A to A prime, so this figure, the lower figure to the upper figure. So counter, uh, clockwise here, 90 degrees, counterclockwise 120. So the learning targets for today's lesson was given a figure in the description of a transformation that you can draw the figure's image after doing the transformation. 
You can describe sequences of transformations necessary to take one figure to another. And you know that rigid transformations result in congruent or same shape, same size figures.